Anybody who visits Southern Thailand, all Thais that come to Southern Thailand and to Nakhon Si Tamarat, they would never leave without having a meal of Kanam jeans. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens. I'm in Ampa Muang Nakhon Si Tamarat in Southern Thailand. And this is a city that is not all that well known. It's not, it's not a big tourist destination, but I think it's an amazing city that you can visit. So today I'm gonna take you on a full tour of Nakhon Si Tamarat. We're gonna eat some amazingly delicious food and visit some of the, the famous sites. And I can't wait to share everything with you today in this video. So we are starting off this morning at a place just, it's just called Kopi. And that just means coffee, but this is the local coffee shop. This place is legendary. They date back to 1942 and I love how this place has preserved its heritage. We ordered a couple of different things. Ying was asking what their specialties are, but what you, what most people I think come here to eat is the bakute. And uh, bakute literally translates to pork bone tea, but there's actually usually, I don't think there's ever any tea in the recipe, but it's mostly a, like a Chinese herbal broth with pork bones. And this one though includes a lot of extra ingredients. There are some, uh, needle mushrooms in there. There's some type of a green vegetable. There's some other mushrooms and some goji berries some dried goji berries Oh, oh that almost smells like apple cider. It has a like a, a holiday spice aroma to it Oh, oh that is oh that's delicious. Oh, and I got one of those little sour goji berries in it, too Pull out a piece of the pork bone Oh, that looks wonderful. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Oh, that's flaming hot, too. <laughs> oh, that just falls off the bone. Oh, just a clean, steaming bone. Oh, oh, that's melting your mouth tender. That is ridiculously tender. The meat has just absorbed that herbal broth. I just ordered a black coffee, but they're making it the traditional, the old school way. And I watched him as he was making a coffee. Normally they put condensed milk in it, but I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of condensed milk, so I ordered with no condensed milk. But it's pretty cool to watch him making it as he dumps in the coffee and then scoops out the, the condensed milk from the can very expertly. Yeah, That's, that is strong. That is strong and black and it has a very dark, dark, roast, chocolatey flavor to it. So it's actually, yeah, I, I'm a, I, I really like light roast coffees, but I can appreciate this dark roast, very chocolatey coffee. And also just the, the heritage, the, the traditional aspect of it is what makes it good. And then finally we got something called Pao Man Geng Nua. So it's rice with some type of a beef curry and an egg on the top. Oh, oh, that's good. That has a wonderful, almost like masala curry flavor to it. You can taste a mixture of dry spices in there. This is really good. That was delicious. That was a wonderful breakfast to get started in Nakhon Si Tamarat. But what I love about this place is that it attracts, there are a lot of uh, Bangkok Thais that come here and this is a must eat stop in Nakhon Si Tamarat. But I'm also seeing a lot of locals eating here and just drinking coffee and hanging out. There's some policemen, there's some students. So you really feel the, the heritage and the mix of Thai and Chinese culture at a coffee shop like this. We made it to Wat Pra Mahathat, and this is one of the main Buddhist temples within Nakhon Si Tamarat. And this temple was built in the 13th century by the king. And what's interesting about this temple is if you can see the the main chedi, the main stupa in back of me. It was built with uh, Sri Lankan style and influence. But walking around now, there's a chedi, there's the main temple, and then there's all these smaller stupas as well. the very center of Nakhon Si Tamarat and I love the city is great it's a, it's a decently sized city I mean not too big but it has a small city charm to it especially the center and you can walk around uh, it has a real mix of different cultures and 
This is a great little city. From here, we're gonna go eat some kanomjin, which are rice noodles with curry. And it's another thing that you, it's a must eat when you come to Nakhon Si Tamarat. There are a lot of kanomjin restaurants in Nakhon Si Tamarat. This place is called Kanomjin Me'at. And it is just, it's actually just one street over from the temple. It's about 500 meters away, so you could easily walk here. Oh, Tini Tam Sen. They make all of the kanamjin, the rice noodles, fresh every day, and he has this hydraulic machine. She's gonna show me real fast. Oh, very cool. That is a gigantic wok of boiling water and he said that it just needs to boil for one minute and they are they are cooked uh, and then he fished it all out all the noodles out with a basket and then i think he's running them through some cold water behind there but that that even just increases the the anticipation for the noodles that we're about to eat here the entire table is just full of colors and different ingredients you've got all the different curries this is the basket of the, the fresh rice noodles. And then you, you eat the noodles with the curry, but kanomjin would not be the same without fresh vegetables. This is just a gorgeous platter of fresh vegetables. There are so many different herbs and leaves. I see uh, winged bean, I see climbing wattle, I see uh, cashew nut tree leaves, I see cucumbers, and then there's also some pickles, some bean sprouts. Uh, Kanamjin is, is, is all about this whole experience. I love how they, they pack this rice noodle. They put it in a basket with some leaves and then give you a, a pair of scissors within it. I love how these are just like office scissors as well. And then once on the, the side, you, all right, that should be good. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna chop them up too much, but that does, you can see they have a very sticky, sticky consistency. And if you, if you touch them with your fingers, they do, like, they, they immediately stick to your fingers because they're so sticky. Okay and that should be good to, to start. You can kind of like break them apart a little bit. When you eat kanamjin, there is a trio of curries that in the south, that is the, the most popular trio. And starting from this side, this is namya gati, which is a, a minced fish curry with coconut milk. And then this one is uh, namprik, which is more of a sweet uh, peanut -y curry. And then the final curry in the trio of curries, but this is called namya pa. I gotta start with the, the namya gati, which is coconut milk, and minced fish, and this is one of the one of the absolute classics. Oh yes! And before doing anything else, I will I will take a bite of that. Oh, oh wonderful! Mmm. Oh yeah, that is just pure like rich, thick coconut cream. You can taste the turmeric and the chilies in there. I'm tasting some lemongrass in there as well. And then the fish is very like pureed minced down there. But it's also thick, not only from the coconut milk, but from the, the pureed fish. These are cashew tree leaves. And I have definitely had these before. But they, they let's just say, oh, let me, let me show you. Yep, really, really chalky and really, really sour. They're awesome. I just completely, palate cleanses your mouth. Next up, let me try the namprik. I knew it before I tasted it, but this is always a sweet curry. It is very coconutty and very peanutty. This one is typically not my favorite, but it is actually quite good. Let me go in for the third, for the third curry now, which is called namya pa. Mmm, mmm. That is a nice, strong, fishy taste. But it tastes like roasted or dried fish in there. A little bit of a kick to it. There are definitely some chilies in there, and you can taste them, some herbs as well. And then another protein addition is a hard-boiled egg. Oh. oh, let it run. That's the way I like it. All right, and just mix all of that with the, with the pickles as well. You gotta slice up those noodles. Perfect. Oh, that yolk is so creamy. Another thing they specialize in here is the, the Todman Kung by Lekput, which is, uh, this is a Southern Thai style fried fritter. You can see the shrimp 
there's a, a shrimp head in this bite and bailekput, which is a vegetable, which is in English is called Ming Aralia. I think I believe that's the name, and then they fry it into fritters. Wow. What's really good about their version is that it's not batter heavy. Sometimes when you eat this, it's it's way too much batter and it's it's like a batter fritter. This is like almost all leaves and then the batter just acts to hold it together. But the leaves have this wonderful, kind of peppery, slight peppery herb taste to them. And then another dish they specialize here is mutad, which is fried pork. So, may as well taste one of these guys while I'm at it. And I think this would be good mixed with the uh, kanamjin and curry. Oh yeah, that does have a nice texture and it's very, very crispy on the edges. I'm gonna taste the, the final curry that we got here which is uh, Genkyo Wan, which is green curry. You can tell that this is a Southern Thai style green curry because of that yellow brown color. So they probably add turmeric to the green curry. Mm. That's delicious. You can really taste the flavor of that green curry paste. The green chilies in there, the kaffir lime peel, which gives it a citrusy taste. And then I'm pretty sure they have some turmeric in there. It's really good, really good. Actually, everything is good. Ying and I are working through this meal, but one of the best things to do is take some of these shrimp fritters, put it under your noodles, and then you eat that, that entire fritter with some noodles just soaking in the coconut milk curry. This is an amazing bite. Oh yeah. Let's quickly do some vegetable eating. Long beans, a piece of jenkel, a winged bean, cashew nut tree leaves. What are this thing? A gatin. I don't know the English name, but in Thai it's called gatin. Basil. This thing. And a cucumber. Okay, my mouth is full now. That was really a properly good meal. Um, and what I like is that it's a lot of food and there's so much variety, but it doesn't leave you feeling heavy or or too like It doesn't leave you feeling greasy or oily or heavy because you've got so much vegetables Even the rice noodles are quite light and fluffy and then the curries just provide immense flavor What a meal ah, I'm so I'm so happy and satisfied right now Next up, we are driving over to a place Hi. called Bantan Kun, and this is a Hi. it's a preserved old home heritage uh, building. And this is an old old mansion, wooden mansion that's very really well preserved and still full of original antiques. It's over a hundred years old, this house, and it's, it's, what's cool is it's just open as an open house. You can come in here, you've got to take off your shoes to preserve the, the wooden floors, uh, but it's uh, just an open house, and you can come in here and just kind of browse around, and just, it's, it's a, a real heritage site. But I just did the math of when this place was built. It was built 105 years ago, so that makes it that it was built in 19... 1912. It was built in 1912. Nakhon Si Tamara, just like other southern Thai cities, is, is very diverse and it has a real mix of cultures. Uh, there is the local Thai and also Malay in the south of Thailand, but then there's also a Chinese influence. There is even a Sri Lankan influence that we saw from that temple. And that's all reflected in the food and the culture in Nakhon Si Tamarat. We just arrived to this place and it was a little bit tricky to find. It's on a, it's on a soy, a street called Si Tamasok Sam. It looks like an amazing beach house. They have a, a museum here in the back, but I think it's all just family run. So we're just gonna take a look at the museum real fast for the shadow puppets.
they have a museum upstairs with some old shadow puppets and they're all made from leather. And these are 50, it says 50 to 100 years old. Pretty cool. She's just giving us a really quick demonstration about how they make the shadow puppets made from uh, which is cow skin. These are the actual puppets and a, a set as well, a, a shadow puppet set. Tonight, uh, we're gonna go to hopefully a restaurant where they're gonna have this show. And so that, I thought it would be cool to see the, the museum, learn about these shadow puppets, see them making the puppets, and then tonight, while we're eating food, Hopefully we're gonna see a traditional shadow puppet show, Southern Thai style. We are taking an evening walk and on our way to a restaurant for dinner tonight that's called Krua Nai Nang. And this is a restaurant that serves Southern Thai food and one of the highlights of eating there is their shadow puppet show. Come on, come uh, that's hilarious. He's, he's speaking to us over the megaphone and telling us some of the signature dishes. Uh, this is a, a great place. It almost has a cowboy western feel to it. Uh, but they have all southern Thai food on their menu including some interesting uh, specialties at this restaurant. And I love how I'm guessing that he is the owner. He he calls out on the on the megaphone and he calls you out. I was I was filming the the front sign and he said you better you better take a photo of me as well. We managed to order quite a beautiful spread of southern Thai food. What I got to go in for is the the gang som, which is a Thai southern Thai sour curry and this particular version is gang som plakot. It's kind of like a catfish type of fish. Is it freshwater fishing? And there's some type of fruit in here too. Let me just first taste the the broth of that. Oh. oh, those little fruits. Oh yeah, I, okay, I've had that fruit before. They just like burst with like vinegar tasting sourness. Oh, that's marvelous. Really sour and really spicy. Next up, this is Pak Liang Pad Kai. And Pak Liang is melinjo leaves, which is one of the ultimate vegetables of Southern Thailand. It's very, very common. It's garlicky, you've got the smoky taste. And then again, those leaves, I probably explained them many times, but they almost have a, a nutty taste. And what's also really good about them is their texture, which is, it's not really chewy, but at the same time, it doesn't have that, that slimy uh, spinach texture. They're like firm. Next up, I'm gonna go for this other dish, which is uh, Kai Mot Dang Tom Gati, and it is red ant eggs which are boiled with coconut milk and it's an amazing source of protein but you can see the ants and then the little white the little white morsels are the ant eggs it's amazing that is just focused on the pure coconut milk the ants are absolutely brilliant the, the eggs are kind of rich and yolky, and then the, the ants themselves have a, a very sour crunchiness to them. Any chance that you have to try Kai Mot Dang or red ant eggs or red ants in Thailand, you should take it. It's a real delicacy, and it's a, a very sustainable food as well. Next dish over here is Kung Pad Sata, and these, this is uh, stink beans stir-fried. The dish is actually called Pad Pet, which is a, a chili stir-fried dish. Huge meaty prawns. Oh, 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 get that stink beans on there as well. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the dish right there. Oh, oh, I love it so much. That is outstanding. That curry paste has so much flavor in it. It's spicy. You can taste all of the herbs in there. You can taste those stink beans. You can also taste the, the sweet basil in there very nicely. The peppercorns, the chilies, and then there's also some coconut milk in there, I believe, to make it like more rich and thick. 
amazing, amazing. Um, this is a dish I love. Uh, yeah, I personally love, this is one of my favorite dishes to eat in all of Thailand, Bung Pat Sata. And this is a, a great, great plate of it. Micah wanted to join in. So I'm joined with Micah now. And the last dish that we ordered is Blasai Pod Kamin. And I believe in English it's a sandfish. And then this is deep fried. Oh. Oh, that is a triplets right there. Okay, I'll save that for later. But this is deep fried with garlic and turmeric. I'm gonna dip it into the sauce. That's like a fish french fry. Oh, and there's some black pepper in there as well. It's garlicky. There's turmeric in there. And that's just a crispy, bite-sized fish. So we're just gonna sit here and enjoy the rest of this food and wait for the show, which should happen pretty soon. <laughs> Ying says we're lucky to find this. And I don't think I've ever had it. So I'm gonna save it for later though. She was just walking through the restaurant and sold it. I'm gonna save it for later and I will tell you what it is. Food was great and it started to downpour somewhere in the middle of the meal and it's been raining ever since. But finally the show is about to start. We saw a little bit of the show, but then we ended up having to come back to the hotel pretty quickly with the baby and with the hard rain. But before, oh yeah, here it is. Before I end this video, I wanted to show you this, which uh, a lady came around selling, and it's called Mangkut Kat, and it's mangosteen, but very young mangosteen. And Ying says that it's really rare, so she immediately wanted to buy it when she saw it. And they, they take out the big outer husk or the big outer shell and then put it onto skewers. So this is kind of cool. This is, I've never seen this in Bangkok before. But. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's awesome. That's like seedless mangosteen. And because it's ripe, because it's not um, fully developed, not ripe, it has more of a crisp texture to it than a, than a like juicy mangosteen that I'm used to. Mm. Oh, that's the perfect dessert. It's been a really, really good day uh, doing some sightseeing around Nakhon Sitamarat and eating some delicious food. This is a city that doesn't get a lot of tourism and uh, some Thais visit, but not a lot of foreigners come to Nakhon Sitamarat. But at the same time, it's a really, it's quite a nice little city. And I hope this video has shown you some of the, some of the top things to do and just a few places to eat as well. And that's gonna be it for this video. I wanna say a big thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Good night from Nakonsi Tamarat, and I will see you on the next video.